I'm here at Harry's Clothing in Berwick. Now, Harry, you're a bit of a rebel. Tell me what's going on. Well, I'm going back to the 70s. Those who are in this building here tonight probably won't remember, but there was a, a gentleman who ran a hardware store in uh, Caulfield, mm -hmm. and uh, he wanted to open up his business on a, uh, on a Sunday, but he's told by the government that he can't, and he says, why not? He says, Sunday is a day of prayer, and it's a family day, you can't open Sunday. So he says, well, I am. So he opened up his store and uh, he got fined a, a massive amount of money and he didn't pay it. So they come back again the following Sunday, he got another fine, he didn't pay it. And after so many fines, they put him in jail. He did two stints in jail for 30 days and when he got out, they the government realised, well, this is not going anywhere. They started trading on Sunday and he was the gentleman that introduced Sunday trade. So, so in some ways, I'm a little bit of a rebel like that. I look at this lockdown and say, OK, he's had, we've given our Premier a fair opportunity. He has stuffed this up completely now as, as it's got out of control. We're never, ever going to get down to zero or single-digit numbers. We've got to open our businesses now. We're as low as we're going to be. Businesses are suffering, they're hurting, and they're dying. Whole communities will go. Berwick High Street, it'll be a ghost town if this continues. We can't go another week. We can't go two weeks which looks like that's the indication we have to open up our doors right now to survive and i'm in that boat i i only had six months reserve to survive if i didn't have an income coming in now so been... what was it what was the tipping point oh. like like you know we've been living like this for maybe six or eight months now what was the tipping point where you just said you know what i'm just doing it the tipping point for me was the fact that we weren't giving an end date when are we going to get back to work you just can't keep on moving the goalpost. That was my, what tipped me That's over right. the edge. There's no hope. Like they're just saying, yeah, 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 when we get to zero, which is never going to happen, right? Now, what are you hoping to achieve by what you've done here? What I'm hoping to achieve is that small business across Australia who, are, who aren't open, especially in Metro Melbourne, small business is the safest environment you can. Now, I've got in, in my little store here, everyone's got masks on, everyone's got sanitizer. I have a, a, an air purifier going, which I just bought just uh, recently and that cost me two and a half thousand dollars sitting up there every time it pur purifies the air the American military use this machine it's been it's been uh, formulated for them and um, and if that's not going to work nothing will work so we are safe here we are in, in small business and generally you'll never see a crowd like this in my shop so I've got a question about yeah. that so you've been open two days, two days. Um, tell me about the sales you've had in the last two days we Your all, face just said it yeah, all, but yeah. tell me more. Okay. Well, we all know uh, our sales, in, the busiest time for us is Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Christmas Eve is the pinnacle of retail sales. And not only re retail sales, but hospitality and everything. It's the best time. I have exceeded Christmas sales by 50, 60% in the last two days each day. I have sold out of stock. My store is empty. I've got, I'm actually closing for a few hours tomorrow morning to restock and reorder. Uh, the amount of support, people are just coming in and buying anything. I just had a, a lady then who, want, who come in and she said, oh, I'll buy a gift voucher. $200. There she is over there. And, come over uh, here. Come over here. Yeah. And no, she doesn't and, want to come over. And uh, uh, who's, who's it going to? Who would you like it made out to? She had no one in mind. She's basically given me a $200 uh, vouch, a, a gift, I believe. But anyway, that's there to be spent if she wants to hand it. And that's been happening all day. I just had a gentleman earlier on today. He came and bought a gift voucher for $1,000. He paid his $1,000. Sam went to give him the voucher and he was gone. Uh, and I had uh, each day, there's, uh, uh, someone's come up to me, grabbed my hand, said, well done for what you're doing. And I felt a lump in the hand, another $1,000. This is, you know, and I'm not about charity because I don't need charity. To me, selling my menswear is enough. So all of that money that I've been donated to me, I'm giving that to an Aborigine community. Pardon me. It's great. It's Done. great. Uh, up at Millingimby, which is a, 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 an island off uh, the Northern Territory, they're doing it tough. Uh, they don't have clean water, so we're going up there with the money that I've got, because I'm in Rotary, that multiplies. So say if I've got 4000 which I, I believe I have, that'll earn, earn to be $40,000 when it gets up there. We're going to put new, fresh water in and get community gardens going. This is like the best story I've heard in a really, really long time. And from what you've said, 
It sounds like you've gotten hardly any negative feedback. Uh, if you count, I believe there's about three or four on Facebook. Wait, three or four, three or four people. Yes. Uh, if you had to guess how many positive, go on. Oh, I couldn't guess, but I believe the overall hit with how Facebook works, not mine, but all of them put together, it's been something like 179,000. I don't know how that works, but that's where it's coming from. Okay, so I just want to tell the people that this is proof that you shouldn't be scared to stand up because I think there's been this air that, oh my gosh, everyone's going to hate me. Yes. It's not true. No. Certainly not true, not in this community. I've had, I reckon I've had everyone from Berwick in my store and not only here, I had a gentleman from uh, Pakenham who's gone now, he come up and he's got a business in Pakenham and he said, there's $150 for you, and which will, will go to my charity. And um, that's what's been happening all day. Uh, there's people from everywhere supporting me and saying, well done. And, you know, it's it, it quite incredible. In fact, when the police come in, this, I, I really had a, a great laugh about this, after they told me I'm going to get an infringement notice, uh, they left. They were very nice, incidentally. And they hopped in the car, and there's a convoy of, uh, of trucks that are doing all the work on Lyle Road there. There's three of them, and all the, all the, all the works are all hanging out the truck saying, Oh, good on you, Harry, beauty, and tooting their horns. And the poor old police, you can see, and they just ducked their heads and sort of hopped in the patrol car and took off. Did you have any idea what kind of a response you would get? Did you have... Was this like, is this like beyond your wildest dreams or is it? Uh, this is the wildest crazy dream that I can ever have. I, I mean, I thought, I'm, you know, I might do an extra $300 or something like that. And uh, yeah, no, I, I never believed this would blow out to be what it is. It's insane. I'm just... Crazily insane. We didn't talk before this interview, by the way. So everything he's telling me is brand new information for me as well. Now, if you had, let's say there's 30,000 people watching right now, because there probably will be, um, what... What's one message that you would say to the people? And look into the camera, and I, I, want, I, want, to, I, want, to, I want them to see the genuineness in your eyes like okay. I have. Well, what my one message would be, get down there and support your small businesses. And if you are a small business owner, open up your business. Get this country going. We need our state up and running. We need to get our people back employed. We need our self-esteem back. Open your business. Amen. And mic drop. Harry's Clothing is the first retail shop I know of that has opened his doors. And I believe the domino effect is going to be absolutely incredible. You saw the genuineness of why he opened, all the money that he's been getting, all the support that he's been getting. I mean, I can't tell you directly to open up, wink, wink. But, you know, I think the proof is in the pudding that there are 6.2 million people in Melbourne and there's more of us than there is of Daniel Andrews. So um, I just cannot wait to see what's gonna happen. And thank you so much, Harry, from Harry's Clothing, for having the guts to start this domino effect. It's going to be one hell of a ride.